coming to you from Studio A at Scottsdale Community College. I'm Ashley Neville and it's time to go Inside Maricopa Sports. On this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports, we'll head over to Scottsdale Community College to talk to a newly inducted Hall of Famer. We'll head over to GCC's Public Safety Science Department on firearm safety. And then MCC's basketball, Sam Ballard joins Drew Wathie on a new edition of Coach's Corner. But first, not only are MCC football players making an impact on the field, they're also making a huge impact around town, stressing the importance of an education to young kids. Cheers, clapping, and smiles. These children at Christman Elementary School in Mesa were starstruck when they saw athletes walking into their classroom. I was like, oh my gosh. Right? Like, this is my like first time just seeing like college football players. It was a very different and amazing experience. The Mesa Community College football team was given the opportunity to read and speak to grade school kids. They also danced. Hey, hey, okay, okay. I want to do this dance now. I really enjoyed the end where they had one of the football players do the dance juju on that beat. I mean, seeing kids smile, I mean, that's what we live for, right? That's why we play ball. While the kids were having fun, these college athletes learned that fun was not the only thing they took away from this experience. You gotta be a good role model. To continue being a part of student success, the most improved students at Christman will have the opportunity to win an MCC t-shirt. On the field, you, you practice hard to get in the game, and here you, you do good in the classroom, you get a reward, and that's pretty cool that that's going to be affiliated with us, with the football team. One kid is already on the right path, earning straight A's. He has dreams of going to ASU or UCLA. I just want to go there. Like I think I can make a difference when I get older. Coach Jacobson appreciated the aspiration and success of the children. He anticipates MCC's football team continuing to fulfill their role. Probably the most important thing is uh, we tell the kids, you know, champions act like champions before they become champions. And these guys today act like champions. We look at it as like, oh, we're just football players. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're a bigger pillar in our community. These athletes took time out of their day to stress the importance of education. Oh, it's everything. That's. The, I'll get you the farthest in life. Well, I think it tells them that, uh, you know, once the whistle stops, these guys got to have a, something to fall back on for a job. And uh, I think that's uh, a, a big thing for these guys. They know that the football game's not going to be there forever. Mesa plans on making this a weekly part of the football team's regimen. Who likes reading? Me. 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 Yeah. From the basketball courts at ASU and the legendary American Basketball Association, Art Becker has continued his legacy at Scottsdale Community College's athletic program. Drew Wathie has the story on this new Hall of Famer. He was a big man on two campuses, an All-American basketball player at ASU, and nearly 40 years at Scottsdale Community College as a coach, teacher, and athletic director. The next stop now for Art Becker, the SCC Hall of Fame. I love basketball. I, I would have played, you, you could have, you know, just pay my rent and I would have played. It, it was that it was that kind of it was that kind of a deal for me. That love for the game of basketball has been with Art Becker for his entire life. A Hall of Fame career with the Sun Devils. He recently was named to the Pac-12 Hall of Honor. He would go on to play in the American Basketball Association where he would make two all-star teams playing for the Indiana Pacers. His team also won the championship in 1970. But it's his time spent at Scottsdale Community College and his latest Hall of Fame induction that may just bring Becker his most joy. I'm honored, I'm honored. I, you know, I, I, I have a lot of loyalty to Scottsdale Community College. I, you know, like I said, I've been here for 38, I've been a faculty member for 38 years. Been retired for four years, but still teach as an adjunct faculty. And it's just because I enjoy coming to this, Scott, this the college here. It's just really, really enjoyable for me. One of Becker's teammates at ASU was jumpin' Joe Caldwell, whose high-flying style was beginning to revolutionize the game back in the early to mid-1960s. Joe was a great athlete, a great jumper. That type of athleticism is what we actually are seeing the fruits of now in the NBA and college basketball. The 1962-63 Sun Devil team went 26-3 under legendary head coach Ned Wolk and is still considered by many the greatest ASU team of all time. We set a record, 26-3, and, and it's 53 years and running. <laughs> and then you get 60 and 70 years old, and then you sit with your same teammates. All, the, all of them still talk to you, still have fun with you. To me, ASU was a, 
like my home away from home. In the ABA, Becker played against some of the world's best, but none compared to the doctor, Julius Irving. But Dr. J was incredible. I mean, uh, he was in the ABA and really healthy. He was better than he was in the NBA. I mean, he was a tremendous athlete. Becker's legacy has carried over to his family as well. All four of his kids play Division I sports, even his wife, his partner for over 50 years. And my wife also played Division I tennis at Arizona State University, and she'd kill me if I didn't mention that. <laughs> Art Becker doing well in the newest member of the Scottsdale Community College Athletics Hall of Fame. I'm Drew Wathy for Inside Maricopa Sports. Welcome to Getting Fit. I'm Ashley Neville and today I'll show you how to use the leg extension machine. First, you want to adjust the seat accordingly. On this machine, you're adjusting the back to give you the proper alignment to perform the exercise appropriately. Adjust the pivot point to make sure your feet are locked in place and that the pad is over your foot. And then you want to adjust the weight according to your fitness goals. And I'm doing a lower weight and more reps to build endurance. But make sure before you start this exercise that you lift your feet up against the pad. You use your quadriceps as you extend up. And make sure that you pause for at least a second on the top to really contract that muscle. And that's how you use the leg extension machine on this edition of Getting Fit. Next on Inside Maricopa Sports, MCC men's basketball coach Sam Ballard joins Drew Waffey on Coach's Corner. Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Drew Waffey. Well, stopping by today is one of the most respected coaches in men's basketball right here in the state of Arizona, Sam Ballard, head men's basketball coach at Mesa Community College. Sam, thanks so much for stopping by today. Glad to be here. Sam, you spent over 40 years coaching hoops junior college level, high school level, inducted into the Arizona Athletics Hall of Fame. You've had a storied career. Talk a little bit about, if you could, the, the evolution of the basketball player, where they were when you first started coaching 40 years ago as to where they are right now. Well, I think because of the uh, abundance of uh, opportunity for players to play, they're just at a higher skill level now than, than ever. I mean, uh, when I, I grew up in Phoenix, there were no opportunities really to play club ball or to play uh, and summer programs of any kind or get personal training or all those things that are available now. Plus there is uh, a lot more media available for players to actually watch and study older, better players like in the NBA. And uh, so they come, as they come up, they just have a higher level of skill. So I, I think that's probably the biggest difference. You mentioned club ball. You played for one of the all-time greats here in Arizona, Roy Shiori. Yes. Uh, he is now helping you on the sidelines here at MCC. What has he meant to you in your career? Well, he's meant everything to me. I mean, uh, he was my coach, uh, my high school coach. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to go back and coach with him at East High School. He's always been uh, my number one mentor in the business. Uh, uh, we're colleagues, we're friends. Uh, he's outside of my own father. He's my second father. I mean. Uh, I wish everybody in their lives could have someone like that. And, and he's meant everything to my career, everything. You were an outstanding player growing up, uh, even tried out for the Portland Trailblazers, played over in France for about five and a half years. I once spoke to John McLeod, the longtime Suns coach, who made the comment that you really don't have to be a good basketball player to be a good coach. Do you agree with that? Well, yes and no. I mean, I, I think playing helps. I mean, having the player's mentality, you know, and. Uh, you know, having a, if you have the drive to become a really good player, I think that can be translated. Although I have seen incidences where, you know, great players have uh, not been such great coaches because they can't understand why a lesser player can't really figure those same things out. And sometimes a guy that really either didn't play or was a marginal player is a great coach um, because they, they have the drive and they have the organizational skills and the people skills. To, uh, to make it work. Coaching on the junior college level, uh, when you go out recruiting, uh, since you are at a, a two-year institution like here at MCC, when you go out to a high school game, you really can't focus a lot on the blue chippers. You have to kind of concentrate on the secondary or the third level players. Is that a difficult transition for, for a coach to go into those type of situations? Well, you know, it's uh, sometimes, you know, just to help you with this sometimes we can look at a really good player because he may not be a qualifier academically and so he is a you know, junior college especially a division one where we play 
is full of players who are of the skill level to play NCAA Division One basketball, but they, they didn't take care of their academics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes we actually do go look at the best player and if we know that perhaps he's not a qualifier. But, um, but we, you know, obviously junior colleges are full of guys who are what we call late developers, guys that uh, may not be the leading scorer, may not be the star player right. on a high school team, but you see something in him that will lead you to believe that maybe with a year or two of extra development, he'd be pretty good. So Let's talk about the Thunderbirds. Um, last year, kind of a down year. You had a lot of injuries last year. Uh, long storied career here, or a history of, of college hoops here at, at MCC. How's this year's team shaping up? Well, I, we have uh, the potential to be very good. It's just, uh, you know, we have to have a little luck, and we have to, we only have two returners, so our learning process is a little slower than it would be if we had, you know, half of last year's team back, but we only have two, so. Uh, we always try to play a tough schedule. The conference is always very competitive. Uh, if we win the conference or the region, then we have to play Region 18, which is Utah and Idaho, and a very good region to go to the national tournament. So we just try to put ourselves in a position to do that, you know, and I, I think we could. And then finally, real quickly, is it difficult, the, the athlete of today, social media, cell phones, you know, you didn't have to deal with that when you first were coaching. How hard is that to deal with the athletes that are handling all that? Well, throw coaches in there too. <laughs> I, I know as soon as practice is over, our guys, everybody runs to the phone, you know, and starts social media. <laughs> but uh, it is, a, it can be a distraction. Yeah. You know, you uh, guys will uh, uh, get caught up in what people are saying about them quicker now than they would, you know, that people go on the internet that, that night after a game and say, well, you, you were terrible, <laughs> you know, to somebody. And that will start a discussion or maybe throw somebody into a, you know, a, a mental problem. But, uh, <laughs> You know, you just have to uh, work with it because it's not going away. Yeah. It's not going away. Sam, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, no problem. Enjoy Sam it. Ballard, head men's basketball coach right here at Mesa Community College. For Coach's Corner, I'm Drew Wampin. From time to time on the show, we cover sporting activities that are not exactly sports. On this episode, we bring attention to firearm safety and the curriculum offered at GCC. Kevin Huffnagel has the details. Whether it's for recreation, hunting, or personal protection, firearm safety is the responsibility of all gun owners. The public's knowledge about firearm safety is really poor. The U.S. Constitution states that it is your right to bear arms, but knowing how to shoot a gun and being smart, how to be safe, is vital. Law enforcement advises that owners maintain control of their firearms. So when you're storing a firearm, consider several important questions. Do you have children in the house? Do you have visitors in the house? Do you have other relatives coming over and that could possibly get access to that firearm and improperly use it? McCown says before purchasing a firearm, many people enroll in the beginner's firearm class at Glendale Community College. The firearms one is more of an, an education to get them going in the right direction and give them some very basic uh, marksmanship knowledge. If you would like more information, contact the GCC Public Safety Science Department at 623-845-3831. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. For dates and times of our show, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Check out our Facebook page for news and updates and visit our YouTube channel for all of MCTV's original programming. So for our entire Inside Maricopa Sports team, I'm Ashley Neville. We'll see you next time.